Welcome back. Stephen Bird started coding the Natural Language Toolkit with one of his students way back in 2001, and it's been continually updated since then. Documentation can be found here, nltk.org, including instructions on how to install for Mac, Windows, or Linux. The project also has a book available at nltk.org book. The first edition of the book is available in print. They don't plan to make the current code into a print book since everything is right here online. Once you've installed NLTK, you should download some of the resources. Go to a terminal, type Python or Python 3 depending on your system, import NLTK, and then type nltk.download parentheses. It will pop up something that looks like this. If you get an error, particularly if you're on a Mac and you get an error about SSL certificates, take a look at this Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow questions, that's number 3891645 2 NLTK download SSL certificate verify failed. This is the top solution. I didn't want to do that. Uh, I didn't want to do any of these. This is the option that I chose. I went to this directory, which in my case was Python 3.8, and then I did the install certificates.command, and that worked for me. What you should select is the book, and then hit download. If you have plenty of disk space, you might as well do all corpora and all NLTK, or all, or simply all. All right, that's all we need to do there, and we're ready to go. This notebook, which is in the GitHub, reminds you to download the data first, like we just did. We can't just toss raw text into an NLP application. We need to pre-process the data. Chapter 3 of my book describes various types of pre-processing we can do with code examples, and many of those we'll talk about here. One of the first things we usually do is tokenizing, which is breaking text into tokens. A token could be a word, a number, punctuation. A great way to do that is with NLTK. There are two tokenizers I frequently use. One is to tokenize into words, and the other is to tokenize into sentences. Let's look at this raw text here. If I split on it and then print the tokens, what you see is that the period became part of the token. It's not really what we want. But if we use the word tokenizer in NLTK, then the punctuation is a separate token, which is what we want. We can also do sentence segmentation. So the sentence tokenizer will take my raw text and return a list of strings where each string is a sentence. And I'm iterating over those here, and you can see that it did a nice job. The sentence tokenizer in NLTK is really good. It's not fooled by a lot of extra periods. So here, it wasn't fooled by the Mr. Dot or Dr. Dot, or even the USA dots. But it will keep those dots with the token for titles and abbreviations. There are a lot of different things that fall under the umbrella of pre-processing text. We'll take a look at these. And which ones you choose to do for a given project may vary. Here we are starting with some raw text. Triple quotes allow you to have text on multiple lines in Python. A common first step is to lowercase the text, remove punctuation, numbers, and then tokenize. Here I'm showing one way to do this with a regular expression. Regular expressions are very tedious to write, but they run very quickly. And notice lowercase is simply a matter of applying the lower function. Here I'm using NLTK to tokenize and adding to my list the lowercase of any token if it's alpha. 
and I got the same thing as I did with the regular expression. There are a lot of glue words or function words that just hold a text together and don't carry a lot of content. Sometimes we want to leave those in and sometimes we want to take them out. NLTK makes it easy to remove them. First from NLTK Corpus, I'm going to import the stop words in English and print them out so you get an idea of what the standard stop word set is in NLTK. You could always make your own custom list of stop words. So for the text we had before, it had 25 tokens. If I do another list comprehension and just include tokens that are not in stop words, we see that it's only 11 words. So we've cut the number of tokens down to less than half, and we're left with the important words. Words have different forms. So for example, run could be run or ran or running. And sometimes we want to condense all of those different forms into the base form. So there's two different approaches to this kind of thing. One is limitization, which is going down to the base form of the word, the form of the word you would look up in a dictionary. And the other is stemming, which basically is a set of rules that just chops off a word. Both of these can do some funny things. For example, university might stem to universe, which doesn't have the same meaning as university. Sometimes limitization will do some strange things as well. Either of these falls under the umbrella of word normalization. Let's look at how to do that in NLTK. A well-known stemmer is the Porter stemmer. I'm importing that. And I'm also importing the limitizer. First I make an instance of the Porter stemmer called stemmer. And then the dot stem method there for all of the tokens. So my stem tokens look like this. We do see some strange things in there, like Dallas became Dalla, has, got chopped off, and then there's universe. Here I'm creating an instance of the WordNet limitizer, calling it WNL. We'll talk about WordNet in a later video. And then I'm limitizing each token. I get a similar list, except university wasn't chopped off. Texas wasn't chopped off, and Dallas wasn't chopped off. However, as did suffer a little bit here. NLTK does support a handful of other European languages. Other tools that we'll look at later support more broadly international languages such as Arabic and Chinese and many Indian languages. Here's a quick example using Spanish. Here I'm specifically importing the tokenizer for Spanish and I'm asking it to tokenize this raw text right here and we got two sentences here. This program preprocessing.py is in the GitHub and we're looking at that program in PyCharm. The main preprocess function goes through these steps on the raw text that it sent. A nice variation on this would be to also send in a list of steps. That way you could easily reuse your code and just perform the steps you want for a given project. First we remove punctuation, then we tokenize, stem, and limitize, and remove stop words. So given this raw text, we can print out our results here. Once you've written your preprocessing code, you can reuse it in your projects and it just becomes a matter of habit. Text preprocessing is really important to getting good results. So today I'll leave you with the well-known maxim, garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm.